we will be following the story of a detective named Ichabod Crane, who has been investigating the murders of 13 villagers, and his findings have led him to the town of Sleepy Hollow. I was lucky to find a cheap apartment, one that allows me some peace and quiet to work on my case. But the way my investigation has been going, I don't think I will be returning home any time soon. Ichabod thought to himself, lamenting the day he ever took it upon himself to solve this case. What if I wasn't a detective? He asked himself for the nth time. Where would I be? What would I be doing? Right now, I cannot imagine being with anyone other than her. Katrina Van Tusk. He thought, allowing himself a moment's respite. I'm not from Sleepy Hollow, but thanks to her, I felt at home here. If only a little bit. Ichabod expressed his love for Katrina. Enough. Okay. And that he did, sitting at his shirley desk with all the evidence scattered around carelessly. It looked like something you would expect from a person trying to conceal evidence not trying to compile it. A decapitated body found at a riverbank with a head floating downstream. There were no signs of this person being tied or held down, nor is there a sign of a struggle. There is not a single person that can decapitate a person with no struggle, and 13 times even, on separate occasions. I have been going over these old archive documents of similar cases, which are hundreds of years old. I'm sure if I brought this up back home they'd deny it, with fear not allowing them to think for a second if these cases might actually be connected. Ichabod's lack of rest did not deter him. He was determined to see this case through to the end. That end after that end, Ichabod started to show frustration. Footprints of Hessian footwear from the 18th century, and hooves whose trail disappears. No one in Sleepy Hollow Ichabod owns the to go horse, and have but the long military footwear that is nearly work. 300 years old. Unfortunately, there is not a doubt in my mind that we are dealing with a headless horseman. Could think about. Unfortunately, there are no jails for spirits, get some fresh so I left to my own devices. And with that thought, he gets off. Lacking concentration, messy, but restless. Ichabod decides to go out and have a walk, clear his head of work. Unfortunately, his case and his love interest were the only things he could think about. Nonetheless, it is good to get some fresh air once in a while, and with that thought, he sets off. It did not matter what he did, his thoughts lay elsewhere. Being a man devoid of religion, he could not pray to anything, but he wished that nothing happened to his sweetheart. He could not shake this bad feeling. It was like a pebble in his shoe, that something was... approaching. But he did not know what it was. Choosing to ignore this feeling, he noticed someone familiar sitting on the bench. It was his love interest, Katrina Van Tassel. After exchanging brief greetings, he decides to, awkwardly, sit next to her. He moved up next to her and struck up a conversation. It was nothing like a movie scene, but he felt at peace, and that everything was going to be alright in the end.
He asked her out on a date, to which she agreed, and they went on their merry way. At that moment, Bram van Brunt, who has been after Katrina's hand for a long time now, was coincidentally there and saw them together. He was absolutely heartbroken at the mere thought of her and Ichabod going out together, let alone something more. Luckily for him, his friend was there to comfort him. Ichabod merely notices Brom's presence there and strolls off. He has more important things to take care of. A looming presence stalked Ichabod and Katrina and saw them off. Ichabod did not know what was coming to him, nor did he hope for it. His thoughts were with Katrina and no one else. Upon arriving at Katrina's home, Ichabod decides to do something he has been planning for quite a while now. He stops her and gets down on one knee, pulling out his family heirloom and proposing to her with it. Katrina, visibly uncomfortable, pushes Ichabod away and storms off, mentally devastating him, leaving him a broken man. Ichabod Crane, losing even the faintest feeling of being at home in Sleepy Hollow, starts feeling like an outcast, turning into an emotional train wreck. He was not afraid of rejection and thus he went for it, albeit too soon. Turning his anger, sadness, frustration into motivation, he is determined more than ever to solve this phantom murder case, so he can leave Sleepy Hollow forever, to forget his rejection and this cursed place. He arrives at his apartment complex and staggers inside. His face is blank, expressionless, and his mind is wandering. If the elevator doors were to open and the elevator shaft was empty, he would fall through, not noticing anything. But his bad feeling finally stopped being a feeling and became a painful reality. When a headless stranger walked in, and only it walked out, marking Ichabod as the 14th. Ichabod stayed in Sleepy Hollow for all eternity.